Hello and welcome to another Wizard Wants to Watch Out video. In this video, I'm going to be going over my Chaos Hand Control GOAT format deck list. As well, I'm going to be giving some tips and tricks for how you can get into these old formats if you've never played or collected for them before. So we'll get into the deck list. We have BLS, two Chaos Orcs. So these are your main Chaos Monsters. You're only, some people play one Chaos Orc. I used to play three. As long as you had the lights and darts to fuel, these cards are crazy. Like you summon one of them and your opponent's gonna groan because they know how good these cards are. But if you look at these specific coffees, this is one for Magnificent Mavens. These are from Toon Chaos. Like you do not need to go for the expensive original prints or in the case of Chaos Orc, you don't need to find turbo pack ultras and things like that. If you're gonna play Go format, like, and you're just getting started, like go for the low rarity stuff. And then if you really do like the format, you can slowly accumulate higher quality stuff because think about it unlike the current format or like advanced these cards will never get banned from this format the format never changes so you can always build on your collection and not have to worry about something being like rotated out moving on we have the darks to fuel chaos we have spirit reaper donzaluk so these two are your hand control you have breaker which is really good and every deck should be playing this in this uh format you have Sangan for searching. You have double Gravekeeper Spy for stall plus uh, extending because it'll get you another body when it's flipped. Then Gravekeeper's Guard just as a third um, Gravekeeper in the deck as well as being able to bounce something when it's flipped is pretty useful. Move on to the lights. We have double Magician of Faith. Grab power spells, what more can I say? Duty Warrior Lady. It's an out to a lot of things, as well as it's searchable by reinforcing the army, which is at two in this format. And triple Thunder Dragon, which is fantastic for getting lights in the grave, as well as maintaining hand advantage. You discard one, add two, and play Great Soul Charity, you're a god. Um, or if you think your opponent has something like Donzalu or Delinko Duo, you can hold two in hand instead of the one to have a better chance of keeping your better cards in hand. Moving on to uh, why I call this card hand con or this deck hand control more than other versions of this deck. Triple gear freed, triple smoke grenade. If you played in 2020 with Infernoble Knights, you know what smoke grenade does. And if you played back in the early 2000s, you know gear freed destroys whatever equip card is equipped to it. So these combo pretty well. You just equip the smoke grenade to the gear freed, it destroys itself. You look at their hand, rip a card out. Two other ways you can trigger Smoke Grenade in this deck without Gear Freed. One is Breaker, the Magical Warrior. You remove the Spell Counter, you can destroy a Spell Trap on either side of the field, so you just pop the Smoke Grenade. Or you equip this to a monster and you activate Heavy Storm. Next, we get into the Power Spells. So, Pot of Greed, Graceful Charity, Delinquent Duo, Heavy Storm. So, two tips for getting into GOAT format with these cards specifically. Not mandatory. I mean, you can get by fine without a delinquent duo. Like, don't feel that, like, if you have a 39 card deck and don't have delinquent duo, like, don't let that stop you from playing Go Format. We have Legendary Collection coming out in April. That's going to reprint Spell Ruler, so there'll be another chance to get that. Then we'll be printing Spell Ruler boxes in July this year, so another chance to get that. For these three, they have had tons of reprints over the years. Talk to folks at your locals who have been playing this game for a while. They might have some just lying around in bulk somewhere, especially Pot of Greed and Heavy Storm. They were reprinted in like every structure deck during like the late DM, early GX era. Next, for some spot removal, we're playing Double No Man Crossout. You banish a Magician of Faith off your opponent. It sucks because you lose yours, but then you remove that from their deck as well. You can remove Sangans, Magical Merchant, like so many different flip effects or just cards that they would set. And you're gonna do really well because of that. Another thing I'd say is if you're just getting started in the format, don't be pick too, too picky about like condition. If it's like, if the only Dylan could do you can find is moderately played, like play it for now and then you can upgrade it when you get the chance later. So I wouldn't get too picky about that stuff. Like a lot of folks are playing this format for fun. So just have fun with it. Then uh, last couple spells are playing double reinforce on the army. Uh, not as many search targets in this. It's basically Donzalu, Gear Freed, and DD Warrior Lady. But so you can always side this out going game two, game three, but it thins your deck. It grabs a pretty powerful card. 
I don't see why you wouldn't play this. Last two spells are just for taking control of our opponent's monsters. We have Brain Control and Snatch Steal. So both of these, like even though the only tribute some monster we play in this deck is Thunder Dragon, Thunder Dragon tends to stay in your hand. So you Snatch Steal something, you tribute it for Thunder Dragon, that's instant removal. Or you can use one of these to clear your opponent's field and push for extra damage and have an open field for Don Zalug or Spirit Reaver to attack into. Lastly, we get into the traps. We have Trap Dust Shoot for additional hand control. We have Double Sakuretsu and one Mirror Force. Like the format's slow enough, you can play Battle Traps and Mirror Force is really good and people will play around it. You'll see them put like one of their Chaos Orcs in defense mode or something like that. And then Sakuretsu is really useful because opponent might think they're in the clear if there's no Mirror Force and not respect your back row as much. And then you can really punch them with the Sakuretsu because of that. We play Torrential Tribute and Ring of Destruction. So these are other removal traps. This helps you really push for game because you can do a lot of damage. You hit like a BLS, you hit a Chaos Orker, that, that's like 3000 or 2300 right there. And then Torrential, the, the game's slow enough at this point that you can also trigger your own Torrential, which is good because there's no Dark Hole or Regeki in this format. The closest thing you have is Lightning Vortex. Last two cards are two copies of Return from the Different Dimension. So the reason we're playing this over Dimension Fusion is I don't want to summon cards to my opponent's field. I only want to summon them to my field, especially if I want to push for the OTK with this. It being a trap, you can save yourself from losing by putting up a bunch of walls and then your opponent won't want to attack into like your Sangan that you just brought back from Banished. And lastly, Dimension Fusion is expensive. I'm going to have to wait till Invasion of Chaos is reprinted in Legendary Collection to pick those up. Next we get into the side, because the extra makes no sense if you don't see the side deck first. So we're playing Zaborg and Mobius. So these are just other tribute summon options, especially we have si at least six flex spots when we get rid of the gear fade plus the smoke grenade, plus at least one rota. Makes it seven. So you have these. That's another light as well. You have Air Knight Parshath if you're playing against Go Control. Punching a Go token for 19 piercing damage and drawing card is really good. So Parshath is a really useful card because of that. We play Sinister Serpent, because it's a way to maintain advantage, because you're always going to be getting it back in standby phase. We play the One Knight Assailant, just to have another flip effect. And then when we play the Blade Knight, just to have an extra light, as well as have something that can potentially go up to 2,000 attack. Then last monster we play, Double Kaiku. If you're playing the Chaos Mirror, this card is really nasty. 1,800 is kind of hard to get over in this format. As well, it stops them from banishing from their graveyard. And when you're dealing battle damage with it, you can banish more stuff from their graveyard to make sure that they don't have their Chaos Orc or BLS alive, like, ever. Lastly, Spell Traps on the side. Two Metamorphosis, two Scapegoat. We side into Go Control, essentially. And it kind of throws your opponent off because they're playing around, like, Hand Rip. And then you just summon a Thousand Eyes. Out of nowhere. Then, last couple, we have... Lightning Vortex, MST, and Upstart, so just other cards to side out. See what I mean about if the only option you have available is a super scuff card, it's better to play it. This Upstart is the example of that. Lightning Vortex, if you're going second, is pretty good removal. MST, if you need to get rid of spell traps. I saw my friend, last time we played Goat, was playing like Skill Drain, which is super interesting. And then, yeah, Upstart is Upstart. So, Fusion Deck. We have Thousand Eyes Restrict, of course. We have Flame Ghost. And Cherubin, the Fire Knight, for level 3s. This is for Metamorphosis on Sangan. Uh, Flame Ghost is better because it's a dark, but Cherubin has 1,100 attack instead of 1,000, so you can get over things like a defense position tribe infecting virus or something like that. So very minor. It's all Metamorphosis targets, so you have room anyway. But these are the things. If you don't have all the fusions, don't be afraid to play this format. Like, you can still play even if you don't have them. Then we have uh, Carbonala and deep dark fire carbon all actually not required at all because dark fire is just strictly better because they have the same attack and this is also a dark uh for level five this is where the stuff gets cool we have fiend skull dragon and dark balter so these are actually useful cards that you can get by hitting a parshath or a thunder dragon with metamorphosis and especially for stealing our opponent's cards it just feels so much better then for sixes we're playing ryu senshi and dark blade dragonite this card's really cool because they can't snatch steal it because it negates spell cards that target it. And then it's trap uh, negation as well. And then Dark Blade, similar to Kaiku, you can hit them for 
like a direct attack and then banish three monsters from their graveyard so it shuts off their chaos engine so these are both sixes so you can go like chaos orc banish something and then metamorph into them which is pretty nice we have saint joan and last warrior of another planet for sevens it's just because you have space it just because you have space there's no you're not going to go into this unless you steal your opponent's level seven monster but they're just there this is more attack this is a crazy good lockdown so you have the option and then last card is the eight so gatling dragon it's like the only good fusion eight in the format so like it's weird spot removal but like if you have to use your bls to banish and then it can't attack you can always use this to try and get additional removal as well as push for more damage so that's all i have for the deck profile i hope you enjoyed it and if you did uh, please like comment and subscribe and if you have any other questions about old formats, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. That's all for this video and I'll see you in the next one.